From the days of early settlement in Clay County in 1871, the struggle between the dries, those who sought to ban alcohol, and the wets, those who were in favor, was not resolved even with the repeal of prohibition. A two-year exhibit at the Omcom Center in Moorhead looks at the role alcohol has played in the history of our region. Alcohol has been a challenge for Clay County residents, as it is for everybody, really. Uh, brought in a lot of money in the 1890s and the early 20th century, but uh, it caused huge problems as well. Settlement here in Clay County started mostly with the Northern Pacific Railroad coming here in 1871. And every year, wherever the construction stopped for the year, a tent town full of laborers popped up and around the laborers came tent saloon gunmen, prostitutes, gamblers. You know, the Wild West happened in Minnesota too. With the spring, the laborers kept on building the track west. What was left behind was a better place. Farmers came and busted sod, and every time there was a new village, the people decided whether or not alcohol would be a part of it. Every town in Clay County is dry, except for Moorhead and Barnesville. Barnesville may be for more cultural reasons, being a center of German Catholic settlement. Moorhead for business reasons. In 1890, all the saloons in North Dakota closed, uh, but they could stay open in Minnesota. So Moorhead, like many border communities, became a booze boom town, a place for thirsty North Dakotans to come to, to drink. By 1900, there were 45 bars operating in Moorhead. The population was about 3,700 at that time. So that's like one saloon for every 80 people in town. Clearly it wasn't Clay County residents that were supporting these saloons, it was people coming from dry North Dakota. It was illegal to sell liquor in North Dakota, but for many years it was possible to mail or phone in orders from North Dakota to liquor dealers here in Moorhead and have that stuff shipped out by rail and be there the next day. So it's pretty clear that North Dakota, though technically was dry, in many places it was soaking wet. When North Dakota was dry and Moorhead was, you know, the Las Vegas of getting drunk and we had these beer palaces, you know, that's not necessarily a nice place to live. The result was street crime, domestic abuse, political corruption, deep political corruption here in Moorhead. And the city developed an unsavory reputation that took decades to live down. There's a quote attributed to Solomon Comstock. He said, there were always many Moorhead citizens who were against liquor traffic, but on the other hand, if they took the 47 saloons out of Moorhead, what was left? Why liquor was the principal business of Moorhead. Moorhead's greatest problem was whether to be pure or prosperous. Along with the saloons and the growing power of the, the saloon industry, there was a backlash. There was one particular group they had a saloon league, one of the most powerful special interest groups to ever come about in this country. Here in Minnesota, they worked very effectively to get dry politicians elected to the Minnesota State Legislature. 30th of June, uh, 1915, they passed a, a county bill and the county went dry. The Moorhead Saloons closed with great fanfare and fireworks and a lot of sad drunks. <laughs> Just because you make alcohol illegal doesn't mean people are going to stop drinking, it turns out. People still got their alcohol. These saloon men became owners of soda shops or cigar stores, candy stores. And liquor was still on the menu if you knew how to ask for it. The enforcement of prohibition was really differed from city to city, cop to cop. One great bit of evidence about this, in 1927, Moorhead citizens elected a new mayor. He enlisted the Moorhead city police in the fight against alcohol. When they're told to bust these things, they know exactly where to go. The arrests skyrocketed from seven alcohol-related arrests in 1926 to 116 in 1927, even more in 1928. The police knew exactly where to go. They just kind of had a live and let live policy. The very day that beer is made legal again, April 7th, 1933, they called it New Beer's Day. A lot of these guys go legit, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs>
Prohibition ended really in fits and starts. When Minnesota voted whether or not to ratify the 21st Amendment that repealed Prohibition, the state voted wet. But here in Clay County, a county voter still voted dry. Later in 1933, uh, the 21st Amendment actually went into effect. They remained dry. But it was ridiculous. We were surrounded by places where we were selling liquor. It was very easy to bring liquor into the community. It became a real farce. There were cards sitting on 3-2 bars saying, you know, ask us about our 15-cent whiskeys. It was a ridiculous situation. And finally, the county decided to have a countywide vote on the liquor issue. And in 1937, finally, hard liquor sales and strong beer sales were allowed here in Clay County as well. And today we have a mixed egg, really a more complicated system of dealing with alcohol. And we're still trying to sort this all out. I grew up in Moorhead, and I always thought history happened somewhere else. Uh, looking more into the history of Clay County is just the most fascinating topic that I've ever run across. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts. And by the members of Prairie Public.